this video will talk about endospore formation. Many gram positive bacteria can form endospore. Vegetative bacteria undergo spore formation under extreme or adverse environmental condition. This is like a survival strategy. The spore is just like a hibernation pod. The bacteria can go into a hibernation mode and whenever the environmental situation is favorable, it would germinate back again. So spore forming bacteria can withstand extreme conditions such as starvation, acidity, temperature and desiccation by producing these spores. So the bacteria which would form spores would remain hibernated and alive and other, otherwise the bacteria would have to die. So the spore is really unaffected by high temperature or any other harsh conditions. Whenever temperature is favorable back again, these spores can germinate and form vegetative cells. So now let's look at this process in a bit more details. Let's say there is a severe nutrient deprivation. Under this situation, the bacteria has to decide that it would undergo a spore formation or it had to die. So it would choose spore formation. So in this case, there would be genomic DNA of the bacteria which would be repl replicated. And the bacteria would be now forming a axial filament which is spanning throughout the cell. There would be furrow which is occurring at a particular region of the bacterial cell and this is kind of like a septum. Eventually the step septum becomes more prominent and now the two halves of the bacterial cell is distinct. The left half in this case is the four spore or the would be spore and the right hand side is basically the spore mother cell. Eventually the septum develops fully between these two cell types. And the mother cell eventually engulfs this four spore. Now the dipicolonic acid helps to stabilize proteins and DNA inside the endospore. Dipicolonic acid gets deposited onto the spore at this point of time. Eventually the mother cell DNA is degraded and eliminated. Right now the spore has its own DNA and a thick coat. The thick coat is actually formed up of peptidoglycan and this is known as cortex. Eventually this cortex would dehydrate. So water moves out of it and ultimately the dipicolonic acid and thick peptidoglycan core form a heat resistant spore wall. Eventually this spore wall or this particular spore can burst out from the vegetative cell and can survive or withstand several uh, harsh environmental situations. Now let's look at how spore is really resistant to so much environmental uh, harsh situations. Actually endospores are resistant to antibiotic, disinfectants, physical agents as well. So let's look at why endospores are so much resistant. Calcium dipicolinate which is a conjugation of dipicolonic acid with calcium helps to stabilize and protect the endospore DNA. Small acid soluble proteins such as SASPs which helps endospore DNA and protect it from heat, drying or chemical radiations. Eventually the cortex of the spore remove water from the interior of the endospore and it kind of helps the spore from heat mediated damages. Lastly, there are particular enzymes within the spore which are known as, uh, which are actually class of DNA repair enzymes that helps if there is any kind of DNA damage or not. So all of these factors collectively make the spore resistant to so much of environmental uh, harsh situations. Now this is really important in terms of clinical setting. Let's say there would be an endoscopy where a probe would be inserted into your alimentary canal and in this situation if there is some amount of bacterial spore on these probes then it can actually invade your uh, alimentary canal and the spores can germinate there in simple terms it can infect you so that is why in hospital settings these spores has to be killed with the help of proper uh, disinfectant reagent such as ethylene ox oxide
Now, bacillus anthracis, which can cause anthrax, can also form spores. So, from a clinical point of view, spore formation is pretty important. Bacillus cirrus, which is the key cause of food poisoning, can also form spores. And probably due to this spore formation, the f whenever you have uh, heated or let's say warm food, the spores still remain in them. They are not destroyed. So next time you eat something from the street, think about this spore formation. Other than these examples, there are Clostridium perfringens, which cause gas gangrene, can also form spore. Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism. And Clostridium tetany, which leads to tetanus. All of them form endospores. Now you understand why endospores are so important from a clinical point of view. Now endospores can be visualized by endospore staining. I have a different video on endospore staining which you can click on the i button and take a look at it. But anyway, it uses a stain known as malachite green. Moral of the story is the endospores would be stained as green and the vegetative cells would be stained as pinkish. So by looking at this stain, we can understand whether a particular bacteria or whether a particular patient sample, there is endospore or not. Now, as per summary, we can say the dipicolinic acid helps to stabilize the protein and DNA inside the endospore. That's what makes the endospore very resistant. The cortex is the one that makes the endospore resistant to temperature. The cortex contains inner membrane known as the core. The inner membrane that surrounds the core leads to the endospore resistant to UV radiations and thereby UV steril sterilization doesn't work for endospores. We have also looked at many spore forming bacteria can also cause disease like bacillus anthracis, clostridium perfringens, and many others that can cause uh, harmful effects to the human. So I hope this was useful and uh, pretty short. So if you want to get the notes, it's available in my Facebook page. You can click on the link in the description to direct to the Facebook page. As usual, you can donate uh, to my channel using this QR code. You can donate. You can also follow me on Patreon. As usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. My courses are present in Unacademy, which is India's biggest online learning platform. Using my code AP10, you can get a 